Perfect. Okay. Ooh, into the cloud. All right. Hi, Olivia. Hi, Lisa. So excited to have you today. For those of you that don't follow Olivia, you're going to want to do it now. What is your handle? Olive Eats. Three E's. Period. After Olive. Okay, but like Olive dot. Three. Olive dot Eats. Three E's. Okay. Gotcha. Perfect. That's a very helpful way to know it. So Olivia, I think we've been friends for like two years now. Maybe longer. Okay. So two years. So basically I met Olivia over the internet. I remember you did a recipe of mine and I was like, who's this girl? I was so and, with you. Really? <laughs> I feel like I thought you were very cool. Like, and then you learned I wasn't cool. You're like the cool girl. That's nice to everyone, but you really want to be friends with her. I was like, I hope if I, if I like make, can I cuss? Yeah. If you I don't call it cussing, call it cursing. Cursing? In the West Coast, it's cussing. Uh, <laughs> Bizarreville. But I was like, oh my God, this girl's so fucking cool. I want to hang out with her. I'm going to make a recipe. Maybe she'll notice me. And we're friends now. Yeah. Well, we were friends. And then all of a sudden, Olivia went dark on the Instagram. She just, we met in person and we had this like wonderful connection. And she's like, hands down, the funniest person that... Um, I've ever met. I'd say top five funniest people I've ever met. Funniest I've ever met through Instagram. Okay. I think. So I'll give you that. Um, and then she just decides to stop posting one day and like a day goes by, a week goes by, a month goes by and she's just never coming back. So I texted her once in a while like, hey, how are you? And I know you were really busy. What were you doing while you took off? Me? Yeah. Oh, what was <laughs> I doing, Lisa? I was like, I was like admiring your face. Um, I was in graduate school to become a speech language pathologist, which I'm doing now. I graduated in June. Um, I was finding my place and my space in Portland. I had just moved there a year and a half prior. Um, I was previously living alone, and then I ended up finding roommates and. I started working out at Orange Theory and kind of just found this like group of friends and realized that it was going to be really hard for me to maintain an online presence as well as an in-life presence. And then I was also falling in love and I just like didn't want to be on my phone all the time. I just wanted to like cuddle and watch movies. And so one day I kind of, I remember I posted tuna tacos and I was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to post anything tomorrow. And then the next day I woke up and was like, I don't think I'm going to post anything today. And then I guess I just woke up like nine months later and was like, oh shit, I haven't posted in nine months. So. <laughs> Were you on the Instagram app at all? I was on my personal Instagram app um, just to see like you and I follow each other. So just to like keep up with old friends. But I deleted Facebook, deleted Snapchat, was on Instagram a little bit um, and was just like pretty much completely off of social media for 12 months. Okay, so Orange Theory, grad school. I know that when you first came back, you did explain why you came back. So you could just sort of scroll in her feed to find that story because it's really interesting and insightful. And I think that more people, if they need to do it, should do it. It might just need a little bit of encouragement. Um, fell in love, amazing. Still with that man, right? Yeah, thankfully. <laughs> cool, and while you're back on the gram. Um, so then what, what made you want to come back? Um, I think it was a few different reasons. Like I was very contemplative about coming back. I moved, um, both my man and I moved back to California. Um, and I just felt like I was in a different place in my life. I felt like I knew myself a lot better. I'd come to this space of being a lot more intuitive with my eating and, um, a lot like having a lot more wisdom and I felt like I was ready to share again and get back on the platform and also I was waiting to get my license to be um, a practicing SLP in California and I was like I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do for the, it ended up being like four months so I was like I might as well just get back on the gram and it's cool it's changed from like it was strictly food when I was first on it and I've really made this like nice bridge to wellness and health and lifestyle, which has been so much more authentic and so much more fun for me to share that side of my life, um, especially because I'm in a really good place. And so I'm happy to be able to share that with people. Yes. And I know that you also either found or rediscovered Buddhism during your break too. 
I did. Um, summer of 2017, last summer, I got really, really into Buddhism. I read a lot of books. I don't even know how many books. The um, I told- Chandran books, I know. You recommended for me. I picked them up. Yeah, so I recommended them to you, and you picked them up, and it was it was a really important thing for me to do. I think I was, like, very, almost, like, I was having um, a lot of, like, existential crises before I got off of Instagram. Like, what is life about? Why do I feel sad sometimes? Why do I feel happy other times? Like, I never really grew up with a religion, so I didn't really have anything to put that energy into. Um, And my mom actually converted to Buddhism my senior year of high school, so I knew a little bit about it. And I started reading and just really fell in love with the philosophy. I think there's a lot of um, beautiful reality surrounding it. So I was able to kind of put all of my emotions into, into this path of like, suffering is going to happen. So how do we come to terms with it? How do we accept it? And it was a really, really nice way for me to, to take all the things I was feeling and like compartmentalize them so I could deal with them. I mean, brilliantly said. And I think if anybody watches this, it just makes a lot of sense. I know my audience is really introspective and just that what, um, what you said about suffering um, you know, it's inevitable. That's sort of the, the core of Buddhism is suffering is inevitable. So not necessarily what can we do to like always be happy, but what can we do to just survive suffering and right. accept it is so different than put on a happy face or be positive. And, you know, I think you are positive And I think most people, oh, people thank me for being positive, which I think is funny. Cause like at home, Evan's like, you're so negative. And I'm like, well, everyone else thinks I'm positive now, but you know, you know what I, what I mean is it's, it's a different type of pause. It's a different outlook. And I feel very shared with you on that shared similar view. I feel like you took to it really well, which I was excited about because we've had a few conversations about it um, since you've read the books. And it's been nice to be able to like chat about friendships or relationships or life in general surrounding the philosophies of Buddhism and being able to kind of like incite our own knowledge and opinion about it to each other. Um, and that doesn't, like, I'm not a Buddhist, but I right. like the principles and I don't know how you identify, but it doesn't really matter. The fact that's is. That's me. That's me. So since you've been back, um, I thoroughly enjoy your content. Um, I tell you that all the time, but I... I personally can't take in a lot of Instagram, um, especially stories. Like I have a limit to like only a couple people a day just because I don't know. It just, it just, even if it's somebody that I love, just getting too caught up in somebody else's life is like a lot for me. But I, I always text you, especially on the weekends because your stories are kind of, are different on the weekends. But like you just bring such a level of fun and playfulness to your account that I really enjoy. I appreciate that. Are you having fun in real life? In real life, I'm having fun. Oh my gosh. The other night I made cookies and watched Elf and fell asleep at 7.45. So like, you know, my life is like 10 out of 10. On the <laughs> um, I love so no, I appreciate that, Lise, because you know, I appreciate and enjoy your content too. And I feel like you're so inspiring. And so I'll see something of yours and I'm like, oh, I want to like grab that and then mold it into something I'm feeling. And I feel like that's so awesome. That's like the positive and good way to do Instagram. I and a positive and good way to do a friendship, I feel like, because I feel the same way you recently posted about your period. And it was like, oh my God, I was just thinking that. And I was like thinking to myself, if I, you know, share a similar piece of content, like, is that going to piss Olivia off? You know, like, and it's like, wait, hold on. We're all spreading like the same good message. Right. And what do they say that, um, uh, cause this girl used to get mad that I would copy her. Like I really wanted like the same shoe she had in middle school or whatever. Uh, and then I thought you said, what is that? The thing is the best form of flattery. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get What's the word? Not competition. Not, not copy. Um, copying. 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 Yeah. Whatever. It's the best form of flattery. And that's really what I feel is like, that's why I came back to Instagram because I felt like I knew who I could, ha- like what I could handle and whose accounts I could handle and be a part of every day and be inspired by that. 
rather than like looking at stories and getting jealous of people's lives and the things they're making and the things they're doing. Like I'm here to spread positivity and to have fun. Like I kind of like to think of my Instagram as like the Disneyland of Instagrams, right? You're just like having a good time, but then one day your ice cream spills and you're like, oh, fuck, this is spilled. And it's like, let's talk about it. You know, well, but like, there's a there's a three hour line to get onto the ride. It's a small world. Right. And like, let's discuss it. And then at the end, we're on the ride. We're there. We've come to the ride. Everybody's happy. Is this a metaphor you thought of on your own or did somebody? No, I did. I thought of this on my own before I went to bed the other night. I was like, I should make a post about being the Disneyland of Instagram. I I feel like I'm like a pink tornado. I'm like going really fast, but like I'm pink and sparkling. You're fun. You're sparkly. You're going. Hey, hey, hey. (laughs) I feel like we should do like a um, question comment thing. Can you do comments on this? If you have an Instagram, what would you like call, what would you like, what is your Instagram in a metaphor? Oh, okay. That's the question for the group. Okay. I'm going to post this on YouTube. So if anybody watches, they can then answer. Comment. 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 Subscribe. Comment a metaphor for your Instagram account. Perfect. Um, So you posted something yesterday and I was really excited by it because intermittent fasting um, and the keto diet, I would say, are the two topics that are most requested uh, for me. I haven't gotten around to talking about tackling because if I talk about these things, I don't want to come in with the, uh, with a strong, with a, with a strong opinion without any science, first of all. And so I need to take the time to dive into the science and a lot of the science is really new, but um, my knee jerk reaction to intermittent fasting is sort of twofold. One is like, most people have been doing this for a long time. They just don't call it that. Like, it's just like skipping breakfast for most people. Mm -hmm. Um, They just happen to put a label on it. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, second part is a little bit because, you know, I have a history of a disordered relationship to food and my audience does, much of my audience does and my clients do is it's not something I would promote because I help people get in touch with their internal cues. With that being said, I think it's really important that I always recognize that not everybody has a disordered relationship to food. And therefore, some people can do things like intermittent fasting or the keto diet. And, you know, maybe they go on it for a little bit and they go off, but like it doesn't derail their functioning as a whole. And so like I knew that you were doing it and I know that your relationship to food is really healthy. So it wasn't like a conversation that you and I had to have. And then you posted, I'll let you share what you post in a second. And I was like, insightful, powerful, and I like need to hear her say more. So how, tell, tell us about your intermittent fasting journey, maybe even what intermittent fasting is. Okay. Well, first of all, I appreciate you saying all of that. Um, I definitely think that both of the things that you talked about, your like twofold argument is it was really nicely put. Um, people, a lot of people intermittently fast and don't realize they're doing it. And so that's where I think this whole fad diet comes in. And that's when we kind of lose track of it being healthy and kind of um, getting into this like bad space with food. I, so intermittent fasting is, it's a new, it's like a new science. It's a new, I hate calling it a fad diet because for me, it wasn't. For me, it was a huge lifestyle change. And for me, it was a vehicle to really finding food freedom and finding um, intuition in my eating. So intuitive eating, as we call it. But it was a vehicle for me. And it was a vehicle that I could handle. In intermittent fasting, essentially what you're doing is you're putting your body into ketosis by allowing you your, um, your body to like store all of your fat and energy by not eating. So you fast for a certain amount of time. I believe there's three types of intermittent fasting. And the one that I did is called the 16-8. And so essentially what you do is you take 16 hours to not eat, and then you have an eight hour window to eat whatever you want. But that's a whole whole other thing because whatever you want, okay. So it's, you're putting your body into ketosis. And once your body gets there, essentially what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to increase brain function. It's supposed to increase your energy throughout the day. It's also supposed to burn fat 
um, a little bit easier than it would if you weren't um, doing this, but it's not because you're not eating. And so I think that's where this huge misconceptions happens in intermittent fasting because people think, okay, I'm not eating for 16 hours, so I'm going to lose weight. And then either they'll binge in the eight hours or they won't eat enough in the eight hours. Mm -hmm. And then you have a protein deficiency. That's when you start getting bloated. There can be major issues. Um, and so these were all things that I had to research heavily before I started. I, I just want to interject if anybody does want to do it and they have a very healthy relationship to food and no history of, you know, anything weird, consult with a dietitian because there are dietitians that are really knowledgeable on it. And if those are goals that mean something to you, you know, I always say like that, those aren't my values, but if that's something that you value, then, then go for it. And, and being, you know, your own I think it's important to experiment with yourself, but also work with a dietitian so that if you're going to do this, do it right. So it's a really great point in what you just said. A thousand percent. And that's kind of what I tried to make a point of in my post was that I, I'm such a proponent of if you have a healthy relationship with food currently, you should absolutely try it, experiment it. But two things. One, consult a dietitian because they really do know more than you know. I consulted a dietitian. That's how I found out about protein deficiencies in your body. That's how I realized I needed to eat maybe even more calories than I was eating in a regular basis while intermittent fasting. Whereas like I was ready to eat way less calories because I just didn't understand. Um, so that's the first thing. And the second thing I actually forgot as I was talking, but it will come back to me. Well, um, I do have another question too, because yeah. when you say eat intuitively, um, how did it make you eat more intuitively? Totally. So before I intermittently fasted, I, I've never had, uh, so I try to explain this to my followers in the most, um, realistic way. I've never had an eating disorder. I've never, um, binged and purged. I've never had, um, and you have to tell me too, if I'm talking about this and like, if this is like the right way to talk about it. Um, but I've, I've never, um, dealt with, uh, anorexia and all of these, um, different disorders I've never personally dealt with. However, I have exhibited, um, disordered behaviors in the past and those disordered behaviors have never turned into something so serious that I've had to seek professional help in terms of like an inpatient clinic or going to see someone. However, I've noticed them and other people have noticed them and I immediately started working on them when they were found. Um, so I think that- um, What's, would you mind sharing sort of like what a, what a disordered behavior looks like for you or looked like for you? Sure, so that's kind of how I started this intermittent fasting. So really what happened was I would eat a lot. I was in a, a, a bit of an emotional eater. So I would come home, my family would never let me, like when I was a kid, we always ate the food that was on our plate and more. You always have seconds in my family and you always finish the food on your plate. I never really understood how to stop when I was full. I also eat incredibly fast. So I'll like put down a Chipotle burrito, I've timed it in two and a half minutes. And that's like a full burrito. And I'm still hungry because I don't give myself the time to get full. Um, and so what was happening was I was realizing that like I was eating and eating and eating at like 7 a.m. because I would wake up and think I have to have breakfast. So I would eat all throughout the day, just like going and going and going. And then I would get to this point where I was like, I am full as fuck right now. And I'm still eating. Like I'm, I have more food in my mouth. And I don't really think I need it. And so it was a huge, like, I wasn't able to control that. Um, and so I guess, like, I called those disordered behaviors. Now, I will say that, like, it wasn't that I was taking, like, a peanut butter jar and eating the entire peanut butter jar and, like, binging. I was mainly just, like, eating to the point where I knew that I wasn't really hungry anymore. And I was just doing it because I was bored. Right. Um, or just, like very out of touch with what your body was telling you to right. start from start to, 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 from the second you woke up, the first thing in your mouth was automatic. That's exactly. the end of the day ended up being maybe even like emotional. It sounds like, 
by the right. time it ended. By the time it ended. And so that's the thing is that when I started learning about intermittent fasting, I figured, okay, well, like maybe it would be nice to give myself some type of I hate the word rule, but like some type of structure so that when I wake up at seven, I don't feel like, okay, it's time to eat breakfast. Um, And now that I've gone through intermittent fasting and I've stopped today, I actually like completely, I intermittent, I fasted and I didn't even realize it, but I woke up and I wasn't really hungry. So I just had my coffee and it kind of went throughout my day. At about 1230, I looked down and was like, oh, it's 1230. I should probably eat because I'm, I'm feeling kind of hungry now. And that was like the coolest thing ever to me. It's just, it was so cool. And for me, intermittent fasting was a really great vehicle to get myself there. I love that. And I think that makes a lot of sense coming full circle because it's not that intuitive eating. I'm sorry. It's not that intermittent fasting was the intuitive aspect. However, for you, it was, it, it was the vehicle. It took you back to the place where you could start to be more intuitive with food. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like even more mindful after working with a dietitian in the sense where I call this outer wisdom, kind of knowing what to eat, even when your body isn't necessarily screaming and letting you know, you know? So um, going back to, so how long did you intermittent fast for? So I intermittent fasted for about a year. Was that seven days a week, weekends too? So first few months was kind of like, three to five days a week, maybe some weeks were seven. It was very chill. I wasn't like doing a lot of rules. And then about like after the third month, it was pretty much seven days a week. I think I just kind of, it became really normal for me. So I just stopped getting hungry in the morning. Um, I enjoyed the energy I was receiving and I enjoyed my routine. I'm a huge routine person. So for me, it was kind of like, I'm not gonna like break this right now and like go run in and have a piece of toast. And that's when... I realized that I had gone up, 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 up. Everything's awesome, plateauing into awesomeness. And then I took a dip. Right. And that's where it was like, I'm not, I think that word, like, I don't want to break this is like when that rings in your mind, like when that's the reason that you're continuously doing something, not um, effortlessly anymore. Like it sounds like the first three months were right. And I think that I know, I, like you said, like, I know that this is more of a lifestyle than a diet um, per se. And especially because weight loss isn't the, you know, key core focus or for you, it wasn't. Um, I think that like, if you think about any diet though, and again, doesn't have to be necessarily a diet towards weight losses. They all start like that, where it's like, you're doing it for even as long as three, six, nine months. And it feels like I can do this forever. Like, even if it's like going paleo or something, and then for whatever reason afterwards, it's just not. And then it's like, wait, what's my identity? Do I, well, who am I? Not who am I if I don't intermittent fast, but like, I don't want to break. It is a little, who am I, right? Because I would tell people too, I'd be like, I was like all proud about it. Cause I felt like it was very new. And I was one of like the first people to really like take it and do it. And I was like, yeah, I, I like, I can't eat right now. I'm, I'm an intermittent faster. And then I remember when I stopped and I would like wake up in the morning And Tyler would be like, oh, you want to go grab like an acai bowl? And I'd be like, well, I can't. Oh, well, yeah, I guess we can go get breakfast. It was was so, it was fun. It was exciting. It was weird. But I did lose that identity a little bit because I was so into the whole thing about it. And like you said, I didn't do it to lose weight. Now, I did lose weight, but that was about six to seven months in. And that came from the intermittent fasting acting as this little car and me finding like equanimity in my relationships, my school, my home life with my parents, um, in my relationship, all that equanimity turned into me kind of understanding where I needed to be in life with exercise, food. And then I kind of started to come to this place of homeostasis with my body. And my body just kind of started to be like, oh, we're healthy again. Like, we're good. Everything's good. We're happy. And now let's get back to this place where we're equal. And for those, and like I said, like, I didn't want to talk about intermittent fasting before I dived into the stove, dive, whatever, into the science a little bit. But um, from my very small amount of research and um, speaking to colleagues that look into it a lot, um, for men and female, intermittent fasting is really different. And- 
Yeah, really different. And weight loss, um, body fat percentage, and body and and weight are going to likely decrease for both individuals. Right. However, major however for women is with that weight loss, you're not only shrinking your body weight, but your um your I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget this. What what was it? Um, uh, you what what is it? You are hold on. I love this. I hope you find it. Sorry, you're shrinking your weight and your ovary size. Yes. Mm -hmm. So reproduction is going to be, could be an issue. And at what cost, right? I mean, you're right. in your mid twenties, I think, you know, I'm in my late thirties. Like these are things we really need to be considering. And just to really think about it really logically, like the word homeostasis, like you said, that's your body just like working well. And when it doesn't know it's, when it thinks it's not going to be getting food, mm -hmm. um, it, it's not going to be producing quality eggs for you to, you know, reproduce with. Right. And right. on top of that, that aside, like it's real, um, I only looked up one study that was in rats, but basically the hormonal shifts that are occurring in women are a big deal. Um, and it's important to just recognize that even if you are losing weight or body fat percentage, that's not always healthiest, especially, especially, especially for women. So a thousand percent. And that was something that was really important to me before starting. I did some of that research um, that you had done and I kind of looked into, and the Bulletproof website is really good. They have a lot of blog posts about it. And for me, I like, I went on their website, but I also kind of read through papers. So I would go on like Google scholar and be like intermittent fasting. Oh, girl. That's where you're going to get the research. That's where you're going to get like down home. Right. So like you can go on Bulletproof, you can go on like these like fun, like we support it because we make products that support it. Right. Thank you. I was hoping you were going to call that. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. So we make products that support it. So we have blog posts about it, which is a nice, um, I would say more like layman's terms kind of way to understand it, but then you have to go to the source. Then you have to look up like really what's going on. And so for me, when I was looking it up and I was reading about all of these like hormone deficiencies and the shrinking of the ovaries, I was like, okay, this is crazy. Um, do I want to do this? Like, is this worth it to me? And to me at the time at 24 years old, I felt I had a very regular period. Um, I'm on birth control. I take the Nuva Ring. I've been, I've been on it since senior year of college. It's worked wonders for me. Um, and I know some people don't, they're against birth control and I totally understand that to each their own. But for me, it's been an amazing, amazing birth control. So I felt like, okay, my cycle's regular. I'm not planning on having kids anytime soon. I really don't want to do this for a super long time. So why not just try it? And I didn't, find that I had any type of, like, I didn't break, um, I didn't have a regularity in my cycle. I didn't see like much of a hormonal imbalance when it came to my skin, my weight, or my like attitude. I felt like I was pretty even keeled, except when I would get hungry, I was a bitch, but like that's every day. Um, so the only thing that I will say is when I stopped intermittent fasting, about a month and a half later, I went through a four week period. I bled for four weeks straight. Wait, sorry. The NuvaRing is hormonal? It's hormonal. Oh. Yeah. Cool. The NuvaRing is hormonal. Okay. It has progesterone and estrogen. Okay. And yeah. even so, you bled for four weeks? Four weeks. Right after, about a month after I'd stopped fasting. And I don't really know what it was, but what was happening was that I was fasting and I would eat at my like 1 p.m. time. I would stand up and I felt like I was going to fall down. I would feel like super dizzy. There was something going on. I was getting very nauseous. At first I was like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. Like this is literally the worst day of my life. Like everything's over. And then I wasn't because I started bleeding. And then I, you know, went to the doctor, took tests, um, and they, nothing came back. So they were just like. Any elevated hormones, either um, estrogen, progesterone. No um, elevated hormones. All my blood tests came back normal besides being slightly anemic from losing the blood. So, and then 
they gave me hormones to try and stop it and I didn't take them. Um, I wanted to wait three more days to see if I could do it without, to get rid of it without the hormones. And I did, and I've been regular for the last three months. So oh, you stopped intermittent fasting a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I also really appreciate, I think on Instagram, you not speaking about things necessarily as they happen because with a little bit of hindsight, you can help people a lot more. And that was my plan. Like I had posted about intermittent fasting on Instagram to my followers about three or four months ago when I was in like, I when I was in it and everyone kept like messaging me and they're like, when are you going to talk about it? When are you going to talk about it? And I was like, I want to stop it and see how I feel after. Cause like, why would I tell you guys about something that I have nothing to reflect on? You know? Yeah. You were hardcore. I was like, Oh, there she goes with that, with those bu bulletproof bars at 1 PM. And I <laughs> Yeah, with the bulletproof bars and the bulletproof coffee that ended up making me sick. I did drink it, but really and, and, and to anybody who's listening that that works for, um, whatever, that's fine, good. But it's just, I think, again, those hard rules that I try and stay away from and advise people to stay away from. So you've been non-intermittent fasting for three months. I've that's been cool. IF free for three months, baby. Three so months, three months. So did you, it, when you started incorporate, or like you said, like intuitive eating for you now means some days not having, not in, sort of fasting again until fasting by accident. Right. And that's like what most people do, right? Skipping your breakfast and then just eating lunch and not calling it intermittent fasting, which yeah. I like was not capable of doing prior to intermittent fasting. But yeah, I've been, I've not done it now for since um late september early october and i i'm so happy like i wake up i have a smoothie i have a breakfast sandwich uh if i'm hungry enough i will but then like maybe i'll eat more maybe i won't eat until late like my life now is just so like i don't have to think about food anymore and i think that was like it for me before and during it's like all that's on my mind is what time I have to eat, when I'm going to eat, what I'm going to eat, how much I'm going to eat. That takes up so much of your time, you know? I do know. I mean, I knew that we were going to talk about this today, but I had no idea that like this was going on with you. And I know that this is just going to resonate with so many people. So thank you for your um, vulnerability with it. Um, I have two questions. A, did you end up gaining weight if that's an okay question to ask after intermittent, after you stop fasting? No. Cool. Well, okay. So I like to think of weight in terms of like body fat percentage versus like muscle, because I think like, as we all talk about like breaking the scale, I think that's a really important thing. And I think that just like stepping on a scale and determining your weight is a, it's a silly way of doing things. Um, I, I What's that? You agree? Yeah, I'm glad you agree. I think I think I knew you would agree. Um, I did not gain weight after I stopped. So I started losing weight about six months in, losing body fat. Excuse me, I, I was losing body fat. Um, you have to know too that I work out pretty hard. So I work out four to five days a week at Orange Theory. I lift heavy. I run fast and. That's just what I like to do. It's one of my hobbies. It's one of my passions. It's not to lose weight. About six months in, I started losing body fat. And you could tell, like, you could see, like, my little, like, abs were coming in. And I was like, oh, this is so fun. Look, like, I have a two-pack. And then, like, I had, like, these little arm muscles. And then I was like, oh, my God, I'm a fucking Vogue model. Look at me go. And I was never on the scale. I was just kind of, like, checking it out. And then when I stopped fasting, I was like, I am going to blow up like a damn balloon. Like this is going to be insane. But I actually ended up gaining muscle. And so that's really what the difference is here is that when you work out fasted, as I was doing, you, you're working out and you're losing body fat. But when you work out non-fasted, you're able to build muscle. So like booty gains that everyone's obsessed with right now, if you don't eat before you work out, you're not going to get gains in your booty. Your body is going to take from the biggest muscle in your, like the biggest muscle is your, glute, your glutes. So your body is going to take from that. And that's what was happening is my body was taking um, 
from my fat and then taking from the muscle. So I was losing all this muscle. When I stopped fasting, I started gaining muscle. I'm proud to say my booty is a little plumper. Um, and I have a lot more definition. I love that. To be in an anabolic state, meaning like a growth state, you need to be eating before, even during, and after to, for those proteins to, um, amino acids to, to pile on top of each other, to build proteins, to have a bigger butt if that's a goal. So I, you know, I, I think that it's so easy to, to protect, for a lot of people to say, you know, body, body size doesn't matter, but I think that you need to feel confident in your body and whatever that is for, for you, meaning you all, Right. It can be different things. And like if having a, a bigger butt makes you feel sexy and it's attainable with a little bit more food or, you know, something like that, like that's healthy. That's a healthy way. Right. So you it's, still love your body now, right? Or you love it even more. Oh, I love my body. I love my body so much. I look in the mirror every day and like, I also think too, like I love my, my hips are very big. I have very big hips and I love my hips and I love like feeling the, the like, squishing them sometimes and I'm like oh they feel a little bit bigger today and there's like some fat there I'm like what am I gonna wear to like show this off and I love that. there was nothing I ever felt before the when I was a, a junior in high school and I put a dress on and saw my hips and the dress wouldn't fit over my hips I lost it I was sobbing I was like I don't understand what this is I don't understand anything about this and now I feel very confident in my body and I do think that the movement that's happening right now, whether it's on Instagram or social media or whatever, of like this strong, not skinny movement and trying to like get people, I think it can, there's a little, it's a little bit much with, in my opinion, the whole like big butt thing, it's a little bit much. Yeah, um, I don't see any of that. So I, like, I saw that like three years ago when like my life was consumed by that. But like, I don't even, but I also don't live in LA. So my right. brain in LA. It's like all day I'm seeing people that are like, these girls that are lifting crazy weights and they're eating. It's like Kardashian butt. Is that what? Okay, okay, okay. And it's it's wild to me because, you know, I'm Cuban. I've always had the biggest butt out of all of my friends. And now I have the smallest butt. And the other day I was like, I, I should make my butt bigger. And I was like, why would I do that? Like, this is who I am. And I really just want to love myself for who I am. And I want to, like, love every part of my body for where it is right now. And that's taken me a long time. And intermittent fasting helped. It was a vehicle to that like cut and dry it was I love that and so now um we okay so you didn't gain weight by not intermittent fasting that was definitely one question and then I had a, a second question oh so now um the most important question you know I know obviously your mornings don't start um like they used to where it was like automatically eating but how about those evenings the evenings are the evenings are better actually um, you just made an amazing post. You just made a post about dessert. Bra fucking bow. Bra fucking bow. Because truly the pint of the healthy ice cream and the, and the like 300 pounds of the nice cream. And I used to do that. I was like, I'm eating healthy. Oh my God. This is refined, refined sugar free. This is gluten free. This is dairy free. I'm going to eat until I'm sick. This is like all the conversations I ever ha wanted to have in one, by the way. So like, oh God, I'm like so happy we're doing this. I, I, I'm, so over, I'm just like, bye world. We've said, I've said everything we need to say. We don't need to say anymore. I yeah. Like and and just, if you now. missed, for those of you who missed the post, basically I was talking about um, what happens when we hold on to healthy, guilt-free desserts. So like things like, and again, I'm not knocking these things if you actually like them. And I think even if you like them that, and you eat them, that's fine. But things like Halo Top or like sugar-free desserts, I do eat sugar-free chocolate. But again, throwing them into these categories, paleo desserts, um, whatever, whatever it is, is what happens is like you eat them without checking in with yourself. Um, and you just throw out your satiety, most importantly, satiety um, uh, signs, like the thing that's telling you if you've had enough based on your satisfaction, because it's just like, ah, dessert all day. And like, you know, the people that just comment on things and like, don't actually read what you write. Like I've had like 10 people be like, like nice yeah. video. I'm like, bitch, this ain't a video. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I had people being like, yeah, dessert every night, you know? And while obviously like food freedom gets that reputation, that's not what I'm saying at all. And I'm not, not saying that either. I'm just saying, check in with yourself. Don't just toss out your, um, 
don't don't just like you, whatever you put it really well whatever you just said like don't just plow into that ice cream because it's refined sugar free and whatever because you feel so safe with it like check in with yourself and then decide do you want the real thing do you want haagen or can you be satisfied with halo top i don't care which it is but don't make that distinct don't make that non-distinction and just go straight for the healthified virgin i totally agree and so the nights are a lot better for me because I was doing that a lot actually when I first started my Instagram because I was like very new to the whole like wellness world and so I came in and was like oh halo top ice cream like oh banana and ice cream I'll buy a food processor and blend four bananas and eat four bananas in a night like who eats four bananas in one sitting that's honestly <laughs> insane um, or, or not eating bananas I don't even want to yeah, don't even get me started on the not eating bananas thing because I didn't eat bananas. I was like, bananas have too much sugar, the fruit fear. I'm like so done with that. Whatever. We, we Isn't that talk. amazing how like you uh, different ends of the Instagram spectrum ones like eat 97 bananas and then the others like don't eat bananas and then it's like they have the same exact bodies. Right? I'm <laughs> like, okay, you know what? Screw you all. I'm going to eat what I want. And like, that's really, I think that like ties very, 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 very back in to why I stopped Instagram in the first place, because I was feeling pressured to eat certain things, to post certain things. And like, I was very done with that. Yeah. Um, the nights are a lot better. So I was doing that whole like Halo Top healthified dessert thing as I started to intermittently fast. And I talked about this on my post. What, what happens really is like, you, you eat your first meal and you get so full, right? Because like, I, I don't, it's not really like your stomach is shrinking, but essentially like you're not allowing this part of your stomach to really feel like it can like go all day. And so when you eat for the first time after not eating for 16 hours, even like a pretty small amount of food fills you up. And the hormones, like I talked about shift too. So the hormones that are supposed to tell your brain, um, either keep eating or you're, or, or not keep eating, you know, keep eating or stop are disrupted. So that, that could be part of it. Totally. And so I would go throughout the day eating really normally. And then at night for the first part of it, I was like all over cereal and yogurt and this, this and that. And I was just eating a lot at night. Cause I think that happens. I think we like get to the end of the day and we're like, well, I healthy for the whole day. So now it's time to binge. And that's just like, that's something that I don't on healthy food. Right. Totally. Healthy food. Healthy, food. healthy, healthy dessert. Um, but now since so like, and that's really where my plateau happened. Like after my first three months of intermittent fasting, where I kind of realized like, oh, maybe I won't have dessert tonight because I'm not really craving it. Or like also, um, you know, maybe I'll have a little bit or maybe tonight I'm really hungry and I'm going to have a lot. Now I'm very, very, very much, um, I eat my dinner and I do not have dessert some nights because my body does not feel, I don't feel like I can handle dessert. And I'm, I'm like, okay, time to go to bed. And it's so fine now. Whereas like, I honestly felt kind of like, I felt like a necessity to have breakfast. I felt a necessity to have dessert wow. for two reasons. The first reason was because it's like, it's the end of the day. You deserve it. Have dessert. The second reason is because I felt like there was this whole movement happening. Like we we've just talked about where it's like, you deserve to have dessert every night, girl, you deserve to eat the sugar. And I was like, yeah, bitch, I deserve this. And it's like, I do deserve it, but sometimes I don't want it. And so if I don't want it, I shouldn't eat it. And like, and what other wonderful things can we do for ourselves to reward ourselves at the end of the day that don't necessarily involve food? And that's building your self-care arsenal or toolbox, like I often call it, which I know that you have a fantastic one. Um, oh God, I love that. I love that so much. Like I'm just thinking about all the things I could do tonight, like take a bath or do a face mask or light fucking Palo Santo and put my diffuser on and meditate. Like run naked through the apartment with just me. Do you, do you remember me sending you that video like two years ago? No, I just do that. <laughs> oh my God. I think I sent you a video two years ago of me like running naked, doing like some type of Palo Santo <laughs> dance. So that was not perfect. Um, it's but yeah, the, the, the different things that you can do to take care of yourself and reward your body and show it love that don't necessarily mean food. I think that's a great, and at the same time, some nights you can do food. So it just, yeah. 
And I've also come to a place too, where like, I'm very much not on the healthy dessert train anymore. Where like, I make things that are healthy and I love it. I totally do. But like, I'm, and to each their own, as always, this whole conversation, please note, you know, whatever you choose to do is what you choose to do. And I support you because I support myself and what I choose to do. I eat refined sugar. I do. I eat refined sugar. And that's, that is that, um, on the weekends, my boyfriend and I, we love getting Trader Joe's ice cream. We love eating out of the pint together. I usually can only eat like three scoops before I'm full and I know I'm full. And then I put my spoon down and he finishes the rest of the pint. Um, but you know, I enjoy unhealthy desserts and for me like you just said sometimes it's worth it for me to have the trader joe's Hagen dazs versus the halo top right you know and it's better for me to have three scoops of that than a whole pint of the healthy stuff and i also know that i mean my my issues with this stuff was a long time ago and it wasn't halo top it was a different version of halo top at the time i genuinely liked it like the healthified low calorie version mm -hmm. of it and that can be really confusing but coming from now where i understand dessert like i, I understand flavor more i find that i find it like i know that that tastes like not so good right and not to say everything but for that specific example right. like it's just it's not a substitution if you want ice cream halo top's not going to cut it if you want something sweet halo top might cut it right and i think that is like what you start to find. I feel like you and Evan go out a lot. Like you go out and you have like these super fantastic dinners where you're, and I feel like the portions are kind of small. You guys do a lot of like tasting menus where you really get this like nice, you get the food on your palate, right? And you taste it and you don't have this huge portion where you have to eat the entire thing. And I think when you are able to do that and when you realize the flavors you like and the things you like, you start to gravitate towards those things. And then you realize like, oh, maybe Halo Top's not going to cut it for me tonight. You know, whatever healthy ice cream it is, uh, maybe something else will. Or maybe you really love the healthy ice cream. You right. love it more than anything else. And I, I feel that. I feel that all the, like, health, for me, I enjoy a healthy yogurt brand over the other, like, sugary yogurt brands. It's just because I like it. It's just because I enjoy it. And I'm not going to apologize for eating it. I just enjoy it, but there's other things where I enjoy the unhealthy version. But if you were also in like a bind, you would maybe have the whatever your you know the vanilla. I don't know the vanilla blueberry yogurt. You know if that was all the options, then your mind wouldn't go nuts. I think that's the important thing. Like I love the no added sugar chocolate, but like I can also have a piece of cho regular chocolate if it comes my way. So like really quick, it was impossible for me before I did intermittent fasting to. And it wasn't all intermittent fasting. This didn't, it didn't teach me everything, but it's just the timeline. It was impossible for me to like go out and eat and not be super anal about everything that was in the food. And then, or like go to um, a place where I could go like grab food really quick and be looking at the ingredients. And we went to Portland in October and on the way home, we were looking for breakfast. And the only thing in the airport was this Chobani yogurt with like, 17 grams of added sugar and I just picked it up and was like I feel like yogurt and buying this yogurt and I'm eating it and it was the best feeling ever because I wanted yogurt and so I ate the yogurt and it took me so long to get there it took it's me so really long. funny because my like ultimate or very recent like food freedom moment that was like almost in, I didn't recognize that it happened until I was like it was already it was happening was in an airport too it's yeah. like, you need to eat, you're in a bind, you don't know when your next meal is, like, you just grab a sandwich, you don't know freaking what's in it, like, maybe it's got some mayo, I don't really eat mayo, but, like, I don't even really like mayo, right, <laughs> that's, that's the thing, but I ate it, and I moved on, and that was it, like, that was the story. It's just, it's a really great place to be in that I think everyone has the potential to get to, and I also think they have the potential to get, and I'm not trying to, like, pump you like link subscribe click and go see lisa but like i really think they have the potential to get there when they are able to have an advocate and have someone with as much knowledge as you because i know that like even just reading your stuff on instagram and talking to you about a lot of things that we've talked about that are personal in my life 
I've um, received so much wisdom from you and so much knowledge from you. And when you, I think when you do have a lot of the knowledge backing food, yeah. you're able to come to a place where you can find freedom with it. And that's like, if you want to go paleo, if you want to be keto, if you want to do intermittent fasting, do it, go do the research, go sit down for three months and read a paper every single night. And then when that three months is over, be like, is this the right thing for me? And then find an RD, know yourself and be self-aware and check in with yourself weekly and that advocate weekly and say, am I still on track in listening to my body and respecting myself? Done. Like that. One, it, that's it. And one important question is, is this my identity? Because yes. It just can't be your identity because you're going to hit a point where whether you're keto or paleo or whatever, and that's your lifestyle, like a grain is going to sneak its way into your food or you're going to eat whatever. And like, who are you if that happens? And so if that's a sustainable life for you, by all means, that's it. But recognize that it cannot be your identity. And to not set super rigid rules for yourself, I think too, like to be okay with it only being three months if you get over it after three months. To be okay with it being something that lasts for a year like I did and then giving it up after a very long time. Um, to be okay with taking a few days if you go on vacation or if you start dating somebody who only eats Chipotle burritos and enjoying those burritos. And like, it's knowing how to really get to that place <clears throat> is it's a beautiful thing and i think it's really important that you you um treat yourself with respect in all aspects of life and i think in food that's one of the biggest ones that we kind of let go because food is this thing that you grow up with from a little baby right you're a little kid you're drinking breast milk you're eating formula you don't really get to choose the food you eat until you're what a late teenager an adult college, like when you are really making your choices for me at least like <laughs> I was very influenced by what everybody else was eating around me until college. Right. And so you don't necessarily have um, those individualized choices to make until that age. And so just being able to come to that place and like slowly get yourself there. I just think. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, thank you for your authenticity. Um, I love you so much. I love you so much. Thank you in sign language. What is it? This? It's this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Wait a minute. Do I want to stop recording? 